Hello everyone. I'm back with episode number 19 and the title of the episode is Peaceful Parenting. Parenting is a relation uh it's it's a relationship not a transaction. And uh we have uh I have got an honor today to have uh, Sangeeta Dewan joining me from Bristol UK uh to talk about peaceful parenting. Um Sangeeta is an extraordinary woman who has gone through many struggles in her life but every time she came out victorious carrying on life to the fullest she is resilient strong and inspirational Sangeeta is an award winning life coach author reiki healer and a proud mom of two kind and caring boys aged 23 and 21 As a broadcaster she has contributed to many media channels in the UK including the BBC and now she empowers parents to live a peaceful and purposeful life. So Sangeeta I welcome you in this podcast episode and uh, I hope you're enjoying your time in the UK. Uh, tell us something about you. Oh, thank you so much Anish, you know. Um I'm grateful to be part of this podcast series. You know, I've been listening to your podcast and it's been very very inspirational. Um so thank you uh, for being here. Uh what about me? Uh as you read, you know, gone through many challenges and um even last year I lost my husband. Um so that was a huge huge challenge for me and now I'm a little bit coming out of grief and still i think grief is like a wave sometimes that hits you and sometimes you know you're okay so i'm um, you know focusing more of my work and empowering parents because i feel that purpose just keeps me going um mm-hmm. you know and um, recently i have launched um, another uh, website and uh, my facebook page which is peaceful parenting and wow and being a being a parent i i know how how difficult sometimes it can be you know mm. because there's no you know nobody gives you a booklet and say hey be like <laughs> that you know it just comes and goes and i i remember actually with my older one when he was born it was like after 2 years i thought oh i sussed it out how to look after the boy <laughs> how to look after the baby and the second one came and it just <clears throat> just like he was totally opposite and all the things that i have learned it just didn't work with him so i know as a parent it can be very challenging uh, part of your life but it's it's rewarding as well it's very joyful as well so i'm focusing right now on my work on my own well-being and uh, looking mm-hmm. after boys as you know mm-hmm. they're still going through a tough time yeah mm-hmm. so i was reading this uh, somewhere that our children are gurus who can awaken us to be real giving us the gift of self awareness self expression and deep self belief i think this is very much relevant to our topic today uh, you know yeah it is it's all about peaceful parenting it is all about it is also linked closely to conscious parenting yeah. so my first question um, sangeeta to you would be how did you got involved with this concept of peaceful parenting like what was a trigger yeah i think i evolved because um my kids when they were growing up they were young 6 and 8 and i i recall this one incident you know um i remember both were them fighting you know for nerf guns or something and and i was like mm-hmm. trying to do the housework and trying to do the cooking and i went upstairs and i just screamed at them you know uh, literally ki why can't you just play nicely and and the the minute i looked at them they both looked so scared they looked scared of me and that shook me because i thought oh my god i don't want my kids to grow up to be scared of me because it took me back to my childhood i was very very scared of my parents or my mom and because you know you could not step out you couldn't shout you couldn't so you have to suppress your emotions you know mm-hmm. you cannot be yourself and i remember growing up thinking if something happens outside or something bad happen i couldn't share that with my parents mm-hmm. because i knew how um you know i will be told off for that you know mm-hmm. and i just didn't want my kids to grow up i wanted to the only thing i remember when i had my boys like i want them to be feel so loved you know mm. by me and they can come to me and they can share anything anything awful anything good um and when i saw their faces it just thought 
oh my God, what am I doing as a parent? What am I doing wrong? Um, and it just took me back to the thing that, you know, when we are unaware, when we are unconscious, mm -hmm. we actually mm -hmm. repeat the patterns. Yes. I was becoming mm -hmm. my own mother, you know, and I just thought, okay, yes, my mom has, you know, I, I absolutely love her and she has so many other gifts, but that's one thing I missed as a child. I just mm -hmm. wanted my, the comfort of my mom and that I didn't got that. And I thought, you know what, they are six and eight. I need to do something about it. I felt so mm. awful. Um, mm. And for a few, um, a month or two, I actually went into depression. I thought I'm an awful mother. You know, how can I do that to my children? But I wasn't doing knowingly, you know, so mm. I had to that. So they sh shine that light on me, that something in me uh, is needs healing. Something in me needs looking <laughs> after, you know, because I was carrying my past wounds. I was carrying mm. something from the past. So it triggered me and I, I just went on to my spiritual journey saying, I need to find myself. I need to heal myself because mm. if my children fighting can trigger me so badly, you know, mm. there's so many things happen in life. How, how will I cope with that? So that's how I went into finding myself. And, and the only intention was that I wanted to become a much better parent, more peaceful, mm. more joyful, um, mm. you know, and, and want to do parenting consciously and, and being peaceful and playful. Um, so mm. that started. And throughout that 12 year of journey, I, I realized and I healed my past wounds that I was carrying. They were very, very heavy burdens. Like, you know, I had polio when I was two years old. Then I mm. went through a little bit of abuse <laughs> period and all that. So all of that. And, and I felt bad because I thought those children are just being themselves. They haven't mm. done anything for me to tell them off so badly. You know, it's my own stuff and I need to deal with that. And I think a lot of parents go through it because I have observed, you know, I'm 50 mm. plus. I have observed when I was mm. growing up how parents behave. And now I have observed my family, my friends, uh, my clients who came as a life coaching. It's like people struggle because they want to do the best for their kids, but they don't know mm. where to begin. So I thought, mm. why not? Why not to share my journey and share what I learned? So for other people to become more peaceful and playful parents. Mm. I think the key uh, word which or the, the, you know, key theme which I just got from what your entire explanation is uh, a lot of like there was one moment where you, uh, you know, you felt like, okay, it's more like a self-reflection of yeah. what you have been going through and you became slightly more self-aware. Uh, and you wanted to break that chain. Otherwise, yeah. you are somehow conditioning the brains of your kids as well. And they are going to carry that conditioning in the future. So in, in, a, in a way, you were able to break it consciously. You were able to intervene and say, no, 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 this is something, you know, which I'm carrying from my past. And, uh, you know, this is an opportunity for me to self-reflect and be self-aware and you know, they are like a gift to me, which are showing me that, okay, something is wrong within you. You need to fix that. <laughs> yeah. So that is a very good thing which you have done. And you have done it at a, like when they were six and eight. So that is yeah. a really good, because um, I think that is when they start forming a lot of layers in, in, in their brain. So that was a great, uh, I think that was a great realization which you yeah. took it in a very positive way. So um, that's that's really nice. Now, I also want to understand that uh, this concept of peaceful parenting or conscious parenting or maybe modern parenting, whatever you want to call that, effective parenting. Um, do you think it has got a flavor of both the Eastern philosophy and the Western philosophy? Do you think it's, it's a combination of both? Or do you think, like, what is it in, in your, in, in simple terms, if you want to explain peaceful parenting to our audience, how would you explain that? Like, to me, it is like a combination of Eastern and Western philosophy, but I want to hear I, it. I, yeah, I think you're right, because what I did when I was going through my spiritual journey and I was trying to understand myself and I had an impact of, of course, growing up in India. So I had all mm. my values and beliefs from, you know, that you have to respect your elders or you have to speak a certain way or you have to, you have these responsibilities and duties, yet when I came to the UK, like 24, 25 mm -hmm. years ago, I mm -hmm. learned so much about the freedom, so much about that, 
you know, kids don't have to follow their children and they don't have to be pressured into achieving these goals and all that. So I mixed everything that I learned. And even mm -hmm. on my spiritual journey, my gurus, like uh, you can take it from Sadhguru, from Sister Shivani to um, Abraham Hicks and, you know, all those like um, uh, Louise Hay, a lot of so Eastern and Western oh. together. Um, and it's just, I think, and everybody was pointing towards that you need to be aware of who you are. You know, we mm -hmm. are, and, and that's one thing I think that human beings, we, we take it like we do a lot as a parent. Mm -hmm. You know, what I understood was I, I was doing a lot. My parents did a lot for us. Mm -hmm. But what we were not aware of it, that we are not just human. See, we are human beings. We are not human doings. Mm -hmm. So we need to focus on being. I need to be able to be a peaceful parent or a playful parent to infuse that mm. because I couldn't give my children something I don't have of if course, I don't yes. love myself how will I give that love although my intention is to give love but the pain that I'm carrying it's going to be it'll have that flavor yes. you know so I learned that from east and west and I combined everything saying okay uh, I remember going back and saying what helped me what is progressing me, you know, why I'm better than before. So I started mm. to write down a few things that, oh, I uh, I attended that personal development class. That's something mm. I picked up from that. I attended one class where it was forgiveness. And wow. why was that important? And then another one was guided meditation, how to quiet your mind. So mm. all those kind of things, they became my steps to leading to a, a better parent. You know, I would say mm. I'm more peaceful. I'm more at ease. You know, even when my kids go through a lot of stuff, I'm, I mean, I, I'll give you an example of the, the real example of when my, the day my husband was diagnosed, it was really, really difficult thing for me. And I remember going mm. into, um, you know, I shattered basically. And I was thinking, mm. okay, what has happened? What am I going to do now? And then I looked at my kids and I thought, mm. you know, Sangeeta, this is challenge has come something to either test me that how much I have learned. Mm -hmm. Can I go through this challenge of losing my loved one? And I don't know how long he has and be so balanced that I can look after him, mm -hmm. his physical needs and my mm -hmm. boys, because I needed to hold mm -hmm. their space. Otherwise they, they are at such critical age. They would have been lost. Mm -hmm. They were losing a father. And if I go into my fear, if I go into you know, that, that place that I can't deal with things, then, then what will mm. happen? Mm. So I, I learned everything. So I started to practice my meditation. I started to look back and saying, how, what are my duties toward my husband and my children and how I, so I mixed everything and I thought, okay, mm -hmm. I need me to be so balanced and so strong that I can go through that and I can mm. be okay. And I can look after because my mm. kids were you know, going through anxiety and, and lots of fear, not, not mm. going to have a father and don't know, you know, mom, how will mom be? And how will our future will be? There were a lot of questions. Mm. So I just think bringing everything, it, it was the amalgamation of everything I have learned mm. from growing up from my parents' values, from, from what they taught me and how to be strong in, in difficult times and through my meditation, peacefulness and grounding mm. and connecting to universe. So I think we we need to think that, again, I could do a lot with my husband and my, my kids, but I had to be in my power. I have to be so peaceful and calm every morning that I can go through life and go come out of it saying, OK, I'm stronger and I am, you know, yet I know how to break down, yet I know how to feel my emotions. But how can mm. I there be my for my children and to be mm. a strong mother? You know, so that was important for me. So I think uh, you raised a very good sort of a point here that uh, it is not that you have to follow one specific sort of a guru or one specific sort of an ideology or structure. Or, you know, you, you can always pick bits and pieces, bits and pieces from. So when you read a lot, when you read someone's philosophy and when you read somebody else's philosophy and then you try and see okay what is something which is going to gel with my personality yeah. and you take bits and pieces of that okay 
and you it's like mixing you know when you go yeah. to an ice cream parlor oh i want to taste that just give me yeah. one scoop of this one scoop of that and i want to mix it in my own way and taste the ice cream the way i like it so it's like that and it is trust me this the 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 way you have done this it is very challenging because what happens is person x has got a different way of looking at life person y has got a different way person z has got a different way when you're trying to combine it you have to be super clear you know what are you taking what are you leaving what are you taking what are you leaving so yes. it is quite challenging and once you have found that mixture which is going to gel with your personality then you can start sharing that with a lot of other people which i think you are doing right now yeah so it is a great sort of uh, i think it's it, it talks about a lot of courage it talks about a lot of uh, resilience it talks about uh, you know i think there is a big amount of balance in you because if you don't if you are not balanced uh, chances are like if something goes very smooth and very happy you you know jump and then when something goes really bad then you go depressed and all that so you were slightly you understood that you are going into some sort of depression but then you you know yourself came up and then you were in that sort of a balanced state where you have to manage uh your husband's health you have to manage your kids and most importantly you have to manage your self that's yeah. very very critical which i didn't i think you you missed that part but i have to <laughs> highlight that yeah so that is that was challenging yeah that yeah. was challenging i i remember so, you know in the morning my only prayer was to god that you know just give me energy and strength for just today you know because mm. i don't know what tomorrow holds you know because mm. we were in a very very difficult position um mm. you know his health could go anywhere i i could have to rush to the hospital in the middle of the mm. night or something so i used mm. to say to god uh, i'm sorry i get a little emotional mm. i said to mm. god that you know just for today i need mm. balance i need um strength. to give me strength to 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 feed him properly to be there for mm. him and and i was even making sure that we were having jokes we were we were mm. laughing because i thought you know we might have more time and and i want to make sure that he's joyful because my mm. disposition is very joyful and fun loving and i thought i don't want to lose him i don't want him to feel that you know mm. he's dying i i want him to feel he's still here with us so we can mm. celebrate life and sometimes at night you know i used to go to bed and i used to that let it all out you know put him to bed and i said okay um uh, hopefully today went all right i did my mm. best um mm. and some days weren't easy you know some mm. days but like um and i still remember my friends sometimes come around and say my god we feel like you're about to collapse but you're mm. standing there i said no i can't allow myself to collapse you know mm. uh, because if i collapse everything else will fall apart mm. you know but that happened after he passed away i just allowed myself three months mm. to say okay now mm. it's my time i can fall apart and i can mm. grieve and i can go into that but again when the situation is in front of you how you deal mm. with that mm. and i and until that situation hit actually i didn't even realize how much i learned mm. it just all came saying oh my god you know i was picking up things like today i could do this tomorrow i could do that um mm. and yeah it is just all came and and that's what i'm doing for my mental well being cuz i need to be well to, to be able to look after myself and i mm. promised my husband that i will live a good life i will look after myself and be there for kids as much as i can in in a balanced way in a you know mm. joyful way so super <laughs> super super very nice so tell tell us something about what are, what are some of the benefits of uh, peaceful parenting what are some of the benefits of conscious parenting uh, what what do you think is uh, you know yeah so according to you well first of all you know how i explain to people is parenting is about see i am like a tree you know and my children are my extension you know and what happens sometimes when we become a parent we want to just focus on on our children and that's what i did for like like 8 to 10 years of their life that's what my focus was just them i was totally neglecting my needs totally not looking after me and i thought no i have to be a good parent i have to be a really good mom so i was like neglecting my needs of going out having fun doing things for me i was totally focused on them but what was happening is that was making me sad somewhere i was losing myself 
So how now I explain to people is that I'm a tree and my children are my extension of me. So as a tree, where do you water? You need to water the roots. So when I water the roots, my branches, which are my children, are going to be taken care of. But if I don't water the roots, my branches are going to suffer as well. You know, so uh, the biggest benefit of pe uh, peaceful parenting is about, about when I look after my needs, when I love myself, I'm going to share that love with my children. And our children quite often don't do what we ask them to do. They do what they see us doing. So if my mm. children see us today, mom has this need and she's looking after herself. Guess mm. what? The message goes in the subconscious is like, Good. I need to put myself first and I need to look after myself so I can give the other because I want to give whosoever comes in my uh, you know, awareness. I want to give my best. Mm. But if mm. I'm not my best, how will I give that? If I'm sad and in grief and I, I'm moping and I'm crying and, and yeah, I do have those days as well, but I'm very clear to them. Hey, today is not a good day for mom, you know? Mm. So one of the biggest benefit is you start seeing your life being more satisfaction. You know, you're bringing greater life satisfaction because you're looking after yourself. You're looking after your needs, your mm. goals. Um, mm. It will encourage you to pick up good habits like clear boundaries. You'll have clear boundaries with your children, with other people saying, OK, don't push that boundary because trust me, children do push your boundaries oh, and yes. all the time. Mm. You know, you'll have better mental health. That means mm. you can manage stress. You can manage mm. challenges because life is all about challenges. So these mm. are the three biggest benefits I see. You know, you can manage whatever life throws at you. Uh, because mm. you're more stable, because you know yourself, you know mm. what life throws at you and what what kicks you off balance and what you can manage, what you can't. So if I know I can't manage something, I can ask for help, you know, mm. and I, I will realize actually it's beyond me. I, I cannot like like I remember asking for counseling sessions because, yes, I have all the understanding. Yes, I could do a lot of healing. But I was breaking down that that time I wanted to understand because my focus again was just my husband and my kids. I was forgetting myself. So mm. when I did counseling, I asked for help. I said, no, I do need help emotionally, physically. I'm doing mm. whatever. And mm. I remember that lady saying that, how about you? Are you focusing on you? And I'm saying, no, actually, I forgot myself. Mm. I'm doing only I'm even my prayer was give me strength to look after my husband and my children's need. And so. Mm. You know, but I knew what I wanted. I knew what could make me feel a bit more balanced. So these are great um, benefits about, you know, life satisfaction. If you're living life with feeling fulfilled, it's a joy. It's a joy mm. to live life. And, and you're going to share that with, with your children or it will seep into your work. It will seep into your friendships um, and mm. everywhere. So, yeah. <laughs> so Anna, yeah so i think uh, sometimes a doctor also needs surgery so Absolutely. <laughs> he he can he can he can visit another doctor and say hey uh, you know i am a, i'm a hard doctor but my brain is not working please fix my brain so it is completely fine to visit and talk you know you are not superhuman being you no. are a normal human <laughs> being so just uh, that is one thing and second is obviously i think what the benefits which you have listed uh, if i have to put one word or maybe two words, I would say emotionally intelligent human being you become because yeah. you know, it's, all, it's all about your understanding, empathy also, your understanding, you're, you're becoming more self-aware, you're also becoming socially aware what they want. So it, it, it builds a lot of EQ in your personality. I think uh, that's the biggest point uh, which I feel that peaceful parenting and conscious parenting can give. Yeah. Are there any drawbacks by any chance? Do you think by doing this or taking this approach of parenting, are there any drawbacks? Well, I can say as a parent, you feel guilty a lot. So that could mm -hmm. be a drawback because what I'm uh, inviting parents to do uh, when they join Peaceful Parenting is saying, okay, spend a bit more time on yourself. You know, mm -hmm. yes, you have a job. Yes, you have a partner to look after. You might have parents to look after. You have children. Mm -hmm but take a little bit time on yourself, work yourself. So sometimes that can bring again guilt that I'm not doing enough. But again, mm. I want to remind parents is like we are human beings. When you're doing something for yourself that brings you joy, guess what? Things will become easier. 
you know i am so much in a mood of uh, rather than looking at problems i find solutions very quickly mm-hmm. because i go into that okay that's the problem what can i do i straight away i don't say why is it happening to me why mm-hmm. this why that i say okay life has brought that challenge to me let's face it what do i need what does life require of me what kind of strength mm-hmm. so again um guilt is one of the things that's a drawback and and sometimes mm-hmm. we can feel that but we can overcome that and feeling guilty mm-hmm. is not bad you know mm-hmm. it's just realizing that yeah we are conscious we are aware we mm-hmm. want to give more uh, but trust me when we work on ourselves like you said when we are emotionally intelligent when we are mentally more balanced mm-hmm. we can give bit more to our children so the benefit they will benefit from it that's mm. 100% but we have to so overcome I, that guilt <laughs> true i think uh, the list of benefits is obviously more as compared to the drawbacks <laughs> so obviously this is a very good sort of a path uh, for parenting and uh, i would also like to know because i think you did mention about you when you were going through that challenging phase you tried to implement certain tips from different different you know the uh, sources different uh, spiritual gurus from books and all that and you also talked about meditation so my uh, next question or probably the last question would be uh, how to become a peaceful parent like how someone can actually start practicing this on a daily basis uh, do you have any tips for the audience do you have any tools which they can start implementing on a daily day to day basis Well, there are two aspects of pe- peaceful parenting. Um, there are twelve uh, steps I have created, but there are two main aspects: is patience and presence. That's mm-hmm. that's two things. So when we are working on ourselves, we mm-hmm. need to be really patient with ourselves. You know, because we are becoming aware, we are shining the light on our patterns that we have picked mm-hmm. up. It could be mm-hmm. childhood wounds that we have picked up. So the change is not going to be. It's not a magic pill. it's mm. going to take time you're going to unlearn some things that you have learned over the years you know mm. and sometimes we are in our comfort zones we don't want to let go we yes. we think what we know so be patient with yourself you're learning new tools and with patience is what one of the things i did was um started to write down gratitude journal you know every mm. day i remember one of my teachers she she uh gave us that challenge that go home and write down 10 things what you're grateful for you know and that was like beginning of my journey and i just thought i'm not what's what's do, going good in my life nothing you know i was mm-hmm. so looking at the past and i was like this is bad this is bad this is bad and i said i don't think i can write 10 she said just start writing it she said as simple mm-hmm. as that you're alive you're breathing you know mm-hmm. you have roof over your head you have food mm-hmm. in your home you have children so much mm-hmm. to be grateful for so when she gave me those examples and i thought okay i wrote down and there were 50 things mm-hmm. i wrote down which i was grateful for and i took mm-hmm. it took a long long time so she said be patient with yourself it'll come when you start writing and i thought my god there were two or three things that went bad in my life and i was all my life i was focused on that but there were so many things that i was blessed with i never looked mm. at that but i had to be patient with myself and i just thought mm. okay things will change slowly and presence that brought uh, me with meditation you know my mind was very very active overactive mind and and we say that that more negative thoughts you're producing more active your mind going to be so it's very mm. difficult to slow your mind like if you're driving at 80 miles an hour car and you suddenly have to break there's a going to be a big jerk you mm-hmm. know you might injure yourself have a you know a seat belt lash or whatever so what meditation did was slow mm-hmm. down my mind and i could observe my thoughts that oh my god how negative it was but there are a lot of types of meditations and for me um, just simply listening to music and sitting quietly didn't work because my mind was too active so for me guided meditations help Okay. because what happens is our mind cannot be in two places at one time so when there's somebody guiding you so for mm. example if i'm guiding somebody to a healing garden they're imagining healing garden you mm. know if i'm asking somebody to take a deep breath and imagine this beautiful light they cannot imagine somebody doing something bad oh what do mm. i have to cook so that's what helped me to bring me to the present moment to mm. anchor me in in the presence and those two things really worked miracles 
And these are two aspects that I bring in my, you know, 12 different steps. So I will have wow. different tools and psychology. Um, but these are the two which I start people with and saying, OK, let's let's get you started. You know, let's be patient. Let's be present. And and we'll have a transformation in, in three to six months um, and see how it goes. <laughs> Superb. I think uh, those are the two pillars on which yeah. your peaceful parenting, you know, concept stand you know and i think they both have to be extremely strong you need to be uh, you need to be patient you have, you need to build that skill of being patient and you need to also be you know in the now and be you know just going with the flow basically being in presence is all about going with the flow rather yeah. than just thinking this and that and this and that and as you rightly said there are different forms of meditation Maybe for some people, it is a mantra meditation. For someone, it's like just looking at an image and getting into that concentration mode and then slowly and steadily from concentration, getting into the meditative state. For someone, it is dancing. For yeah. someone, it is painting. For someone, it is, <laughs> you know, just doing nothing, the, the yeah. nothingness, you know. So meditation is also done in different, different format, different, different manner. So the... The, the, the tool needs to be taken. The technique can be anything. So the meditation as a tool uh, yeah. is a good suggestion, but anyone can take any technique, any path, which makes their mind become still. That's it. That's the goal. Yeah. So that is really good. Um, I think a lot of self-reflection happens, uh, you know, when you are doing meditation. So a lot of insights comes into your mind. Uh, and that helps you to become more effective parent, you know, to become more peaceful parent because then you are actually in a, at, at peace and you can only give peace. As you rightly said, you can only give what you have. So Absolutely. if you have a lot of negative thoughts, you can only give negative thoughts. You know, you are, even if you're not giving the negative thoughts consciously, your energy, the energy which you are showing is negative. So someone is going to pick that energy Absolutely. and that is just going to create more confusion. So I think peacefulness is very important. Wow, amazing. Uh, I'm really pressed on the time, but uh, it's a very good sort of a conversation. It can go on and on because, Sangeeta, you have got so much of information, so much of real life experience which you have implemented. And I, I usually admire those people who have gone through a challenge. Uh, sooner or later, they realize that, no, 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 this is uh, either I can just go this way and just completely lose my life and, you know, you know, feel depressed and whatever, you know, um, uh, drink alcohol and just abuse myself, et cetera, et cetera. Or I can learn from this incident yeah. or I can, you know, try and uh, maybe this is, this has happened to me because I'm, you know, maybe I have to show way to somebody else. And if you take that path, chances are you will first heal yourself. Once you have completely healed yourself, then you can start healing other people. So you have taken the other path. And uh, that's how you got into Reiki healing. And, uh, you know, that's how you... Because um, I think I realized very earlier on that our pain has a purpose, mm. you know. And mm. yes, I was in a victim consciousness that things happened mm. to me, mm. you know. And I remember reading something about is that life is not happening to me. Life is happening for me. What mm. can I take out of it? So mm. I thought, you know what? I don't want anybody to suffer the way I suffered. Or mm -hmm. even if people are going through challenge, you know, because that's life. We, we will go through challenges. Mm -hmm. How can I support them? How can I be there for them? Like mm -hmm. I wanted somebody to be there for me and I mm -hmm. didn't get that. But I mm -hmm. thought now by working on myself, by healing myself, I can share that space. I can share that knowledge. Just simply being present in that energy and saying, hey, it's going to be okay. Sometimes mm -hmm. you cannot say anything, you cannot do anything, but energetically, if you have that intention, that sometimes mm -hmm. uplifts somebody else, you know, so mm -hmm. being peaceful is very, very powerful, um, mm -hmm. you know, so that's, that's how I want parents to uh, mm -hmm. become conscious, become, you know, work on themselves and because mm -hmm. a lot of kids are going through mental ill health right now. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. But a I lot. cannot support my child if I am in turmoil. See, if my oh, child yes. is ill, if I get into ICU, I'm no good to my child. Oh, yes. Absolutely. You know, so I Absolutely. need to work on myself so I can be mm. there for my children. Or mm. if I'm planning to be a parent, you know, even mm. if I'm not a parent, 
even mm -hmm. you know bringing your sibling up sometimes we take that role or looking after mm -hmm. our parent we become our parents parent mm -hmm. at some point <laughs> you know that's true so it, it true. helps in every aspect of your life um, mm. So I would invite anybody who is watching this and saying, mm. come and join, you know, my Facebook uh, uh, page is Peaceful Parenting, find me, mm. and I will mm. share some links with you as well, Anish. So sure. if you know, that'll be amazing. 100%, 100 <laughs> we are going to put that in the episode itself, so you can share the link and I'm going to put it there. Um, and uh, yeah, it was really good, Sangeeta, to have you uh, in this episode. You have given some really good points for our audience about peaceful parenting, uh, how parenting should be rather than, oh, you have to do this, you have to do this. And, you know, that is the problem or you are the problem. Now, sometimes we are the problem and we need to fix ourselves. And uh, they are actually God's gift, as I said, you know, as an Absolutely. avenue for you to, they're like mirror for you and you need to, you know, do that self-reflection on a daily yeah. basis. Oh, this is something which I have done wrong. So I think they are a very beautiful way of beautiful gift from gods uh, to you know bring self -aware awareness in, in in parents basically so great sangeeta thank you once again for joining in and uh, i wish you all the very best for your future um projects and uh, areas which you are which you are involved in like you i think you are an author as well so just keep doing the good work keep helping a lot of parents and uh, yeah, keep shining. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Anish. Great. Thank you. Take care.